you had to leave your church that you paid thousands of dollars in tithes and offerings to get things done in that church, to put new carpet in that place, and to do things in that church that they needed done for the sake of the worship service and for the sake of the glory of God and saving souls. And you sunk your life into that church, and all of a sudden they said, we're going to a better Bible. Get out. Let me show you from the Bible this idea. And I did this in the uh, which Bible you, 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 make, you be the judge. But I'm going to put it in this aspect here. Remember, Naboth wanted, or excuse me, Ahab wanted Naboth's vineyard. Who, by the way, who got it for him? Jezebel. Go read that story. In fact, if you want to know the purpose of Mystery Babylon or Jezebel, you want to know her purpose, her function. God showed me this from the scriptures. Mike, this is who she is. This is how she operates. She is responsible for the transfer of authority. The authority of the vineyard was under Naboth, and there was no way around it. Jezebel said to Ahab, I'll get it for you. I'll get it for you. So she had to have Naboth killed in order for Ahab to confiscate the land, and that's what he did. In America, the transfer of authority from the Constitution to a dictatorship under Barack Hussein is being done by Mystery Babylon the Great. In the church, the transfer of authority uh, from the church being under the authority of the Bible or the King James Bible to some false authority of false translations or some spirit out there. Oh, I'm getting a new revelation from God. That's, that's Jezebel. That's Mystery Babylon the Great. Think of what happens in a home. The biblical head of a home is the husband. Is the mother of harlots taking away biblical authority in a home? That one's obvious. That's who she is and that's how she operates. Here's what there are two vines clearly delineated in the scriptures, clearly defined in the scripture, two different vines. Here's the first one. For Deuteronomy 32, for their vine is the vine of Sodom and of the fields of Gomorrah. Now, you think about that one for a minute. Their grapes are the grapes of Gaul. Their clusters are bitter. Their wine... Then, now, notice that he says the vine is the vine of Sodom. The grapes are the grapes of Gaul. Therefore, their wine is the poison of dragons... And the cruel venom of asps is not this laid up in store with me and sealed up among my treasures. And God is trying to teach us here. Number one, if the vine is from Sodom, if the underlying manuscripts came from the Vatican, through either the Sinaiticus, Mount Sinai, which was the monastery, or the Vaticanus, or Alexandrinus, or any of these, these main manuscripts, if the vine is from the Vatican then the grapes are going to be full of gall, and the wine is going to be poison. The wine is the spirit. Do you understand that? The vine is all... What vine did it come from? And if it came from the vine of the Vatican, if it came from the vine of Sodom, then the wine that is produced from that vine, the spirit that comes as a result of that vine, is going to be none other than the devil himself. It's the poison of dragons and the, and the venom of snakes or asps. That's what the Bible's telling you. So the vine of the NIV, the New American Standard, the Message Bible, the Holman Standard Bible, the New King James Version, and every other version in the world other than the King James and its derivatives all have as their source the vine of Sodom. And God said, what? Your, 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 your Bible came from Sodom? Your Bible came from that vine? Don't you know that you're drinking poison? Don't you know? This is why you won't go to church over here. This is why you won't sit in that congregation and you won't take your kids there. This is why you sit at home on Sunday morning and turn Bethel Church on or Joel Osteen. No, just kidding or anybody else that's preaching the truth, and you won't take your kids to because you said, you know what, I am not putting my kids in a Sunday school class or sit under a pastor where they're going to be fed poison. I won't do it. 
And God bless you for that. And he is blessing you for that. If you lose all your friends and all your relatives over this issue, good for you. You keep your stand because the devil will come and destroy your vine. He'll destroy your, your vineyard. Here's what John 15 says. Here's the other vine. John 15, verse 1. I am the true vine and my father is the husbandman. Who is the true vine? It's not Sodom. It's not Gomorrah. It's not the serpent. The true vine is Jesus Christ. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. That, by the way, let me stop right here. This is why, this is, this is why you had a rough day. This is why, this is why, no, this is why you got into a little bit of sin here a while back. And God allowed it, and the Holy Ghost came and whooped the fire out of you. And you got down on your face before Almighty God and said, God, I'm a wretched, low-life sinner. I say I believe the Bible, and I live like a heathen. God, would you, God, would you chasten me and correct me? And the Holy Ghost takes you, and he, you know what the husbandman starts doing? He starts clipping stuff off the vine. Boy, that's no good for you there. Boy, listen, and God, you know what God's saying? Boy, I'm going to make a good vine out of you. Boy, you're going to bear some fruit. You just wait and see. That's, that's what the true vine will do. That's what Jesus will do. That's what the Father will do as the husbandman. And you abide in that vine and you hang on, all right? God's got a blessing for you. But anyway, now in verse 3, now ye are clean. How? Through the word which I have spoken unto you. Look at the emphasis and the relationship between the vine and Christ and the Bible. Now in verse 4, John 15, Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me ye can do nothing. Now, I want you to I want you to focus now on what Christ is teaching here. He's teaching clearly that he said, Number one, I'm the vine. You are the branches of that vine. You are you are abiding in me, and if you abide in me, then you will bring forth much fruit. He said, Now you won't produce the fruit because Christians don't produce fruit. They bear the fruit that the vine has produced. But we don't produce the fruit. We, it's not about our works. It's about Christ working through us. Now, here's what he continues to say in verse, uh, verse 6. The Bible says, If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. I want you to notice what happens to the branch that is withered and does not bear fruit. What happens to it? They are cast into the fire and burned. Now, look at Mark chapter 4, verse 14. Here's how the devil works. The sower soweth the word. And these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and does what? Taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. I want to go forward here for a second. I want you to look on this one to Luke 12. It's the one on the bottom. Those by the wayside are they that hear. Then cometh the devil and taketh away the word out of their hearts, and uh, at, lest they should believe and be saved. And so the Bible. Let me let me go to this here. The Bible is clearly teaching you, the devil has a responsibility. He has a job. His job is to take away the word. Now think about what we just heard John Piper say. He just said, how can we get the King James Bible out of this church? 
How can you as a pastor do it? And, it, and l- listen what he said. He said it needs to be done. It needs, he didn't just say, now, I don't have a problem with the King James. If you want to use it, use it. That's not what he said. Now, he said, now show it respect and talk nice about it and don't ever say bad things about it. But he didn't say, now, if the church is King James and they're using the King James, leave them alone. He didn't say that. He said, it's got to be taken away. People need to understand there is a better Bible out there. Let's, let's abandon the King James and let's go to these new Bibles. But he never said, leave it in there. Do you know why he didn't say that? The Spirit that is evident in him, hates the Word of God, hates the King James Bible. It hates it. The spirit that is in anyone who will look at a congregation or a Bible study group, or or, or you for that matter, and say, you really need to get an NIV. You really need to get a New American Standard. You need to get away. Nobody ever says to you, oh, you use the King James. I think that's great. I think the King James is a wonderful translation. I, you know what? Hang on to that. No one's ever said that to you. They've all, they've all lied to you. They've all mocked you. They've all made fun of you. They have provoked you. They have tried to, they've tried to get you away from that Bible. What spirit is it that tries to get the Word out of you? What spirit is that? That is not the Holy Spirit of God. It's not. The, and here Piper talks out of both sides of his mouth. I think the King James is a great gift. Uh, there are better Bibles. We need to get the King James out of there. You know what he is? He's double-minded man. He's double-tongued. Him speak with forked tongue, Kimosabi. That's what he does. He's not telling you the truth. You cannot say on one hand, I think the King James Bible is a great gift. Hang on to it. And then come out and say, we need to get rid of it. And that's what he did. The devil and the spirit of the dragon is responsible for removing the word out of your life, out of your family, out of your children, out of your marriage, out of our colleges and universities, out of our pulpits, out of our Bible study groups. You've been to Bible study groups where they have, they have mocked you, they have, they have uh, scorned you and told you, uh, listen, we don't want to use that King James. Well, you need to, if you're going to be part of us, you have, to bring an, uh, you have to bring a message in here. You bring the original Greek and Hebrew. You bring any number of things. Just don't bring a King James Bible in here. They don't want you around. What spirit is that? Back to, uh, back to Mark chapter 4. Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word,